Warning, this story contains an unholy amount of flatulence. I discovered Clunker's ghastly flatulence at our fourth band practice. Clunker, who was the funniest person I knew, was not only fun to be around, but was also an extremely talented bass player. That said, he had a problem. His farts kill people. Our band was called Bomb Threat. We played a cool mix of punk and grunge covers, plus a heaping handful of originals. The band was a trio, Clunker on bass and backing vocals, Blaze on drums, and yours truly on lead guitar and vocals. We were good, not best band ever by any stretch of the imagination, but we had heart. We were writing a song called Party Girls when the horror surrounding Clunker's aromatic anus were revealed. Something vile and despicable was about to drop. A fart that I'll never forget, no matter how hard I try. Just as we finished the song, Clunker leaned into the microphone and with bloodshot eyes and a cheese-eating grin said, Uh-oh. He started fanning the air around him. Um, sorry guys, he added, making a sour face. This one's deadly. I was getting impatient. If Clunker was the joker of the band, then I was the taskmaster. As I was starting into the next song, something stopped me mid-riff. I caught a whiff. Oh, good God, I said holding back a stream of puke that was threatening to leak from my mouth. Blaze brushed his long blonde hair from his pretty boy face, took a swig from his bottle of bud, then he greened out. Oh, gross. Blaze put his hand over his mouth and gagged. He stood up too quickly, slipped and fell backwards. Drums and cymbals and empty beer bottles crashed in protest. Clunker was having himself a good laugh. I, on the other hand, was stuffing my face inside my t-shirt, racing upstairs for safety. Once upstairs, we retreated into Clunker's untidy bedroom and rolled a joint. We smoked and shared our best fart stories. You see, at this point, it was still funny. Getting infiltrated by the world's worst fart is funny the first time it happens. Leave it to Clunker to clear a room through the force of his rectum. As always, it was me who suggested to get back to work. I opened the door to the befouled basement and started slinking downstairs. I was halfway down when something started tugging at my nose. Something awful. When I squinted, I could actually see the fart. It was a shimmering brown box of putrid air. It moved slowly like a German tank, creeping its way upstairs, looking to finish me off. What smacked my nostrils was the most pungent, rancid stench I'd ever had the displeasure of smelling. And I'm a plumber. It's a good thing I reached for the handrail, because the smell literally knocked me on my ass. Soon, I was gasping for air, choking and coughing in violet spurts. My stomach was threatening to revolt. This wasn't funny anymore, except it was to blaze and clunker. While I was hyperventilating and thinking I was going to die, those two hoodlums were rolling on the floor, howling. Blaze managed to drag me upstairs and almost fainted in doing so. This was no ordinary fart we were dealing with. I couldn't stop coughing. My face was breaking out into hives and my stomach was in turmoil. Band practice was canceled. From that day forth, whenever Clunker let a bad one go, which thankfully wasn't often, unlike me and Blaze, it would be called a Clunker's Classic. My mind went to work, convincing me that the fart wasn't as bad as I remembered. Healthy people don't let out Hiroshima-style farts that linger for hours, farts that move slowly and methodically towards its enemy. Farts don't do that. He must have eaten something rotten. 
I mean, this was Clunker we were talking about. Yes, he's greasy. He's the bass player, after all. But still. Except my body felt diseased. My stomach was aching, and I had serious bouts of diarrhea, which lasted for ten shitty days. I kept that part to myself. Then it happened again. We were playing a weekend stint in Windsor, which rests on the Detroit border, staying in a cheap hotel that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Fortunately, we were young and carefree. We didn't do much sleeping anyway. Night two, the venue was packed. Everyone was dancing and partying and getting lit. The place was electric. Our set was tight. We closed the show with party girls, and the crowd sang every word. As I hit the last chord, something hit me back. Something most foul. I caught a whiff. Oh no, not again. Clunker was giving me the look. He smiled sorrily and mouthed the words I feared the most. Uh Uh-oh. The putrid stench hit me like a Mike Tyson haymaker. I fell to my knees and started rolling around on the dirty stage, choking and gagging and flailing on my guitar. The audience was loving it. They thought it was part of the show. The lights dimmed and the crowd gradually dispersed. Meanwhile, my innards were threatening to expel themselves. The sound guy approached the stage with a generous grin wrapped across his bearded face. I tried to warn him, but to no avail. The poor sound guy was in the middle of congratulating us when, bam, he gets crop dusted by a clunker's classic. What the... The sound man floundered. Within seconds, his face turned lime green. He puked all over the stage. After that, the scene became a gross-out party. Clunker's brawny bundle of breaking wind was sifting throughout the nightclub brazenly. Audience members were panting and puking and gagging and crying as they made a mad dash towards the exit. I saw a young woman get drenched in barf by the guy standing next to her. It was sickening. She returned the favor. By now, my stomach was clenched so tight I couldn't move. It took all my effort not to pass out. Concurrently, Clunker, who's immune to his own flatulence, was heading backstage with a tall brunette who was giggling and touching his arm. I couldn't believe it. But that's how the clunk rolls. The nightclub cleared out in a flash. The sound man who inhaled the fart full on was rushed to the hospital where he later died. It was reported that two audience members also perished that night. Needless to say, we would never play Windsor again. Blaze and I sat down with Clunker and had ourselves an intervention. It wasn't easy. How do you discuss someone's ferocious flatulence and keep a straight face? We were all under 30. Sensitivity was not our strongest suit. To my amazement, Clunker volunteered to see a doctor and spent months undergoing tests, which ultimately proved inconclusive. We were no better off than where we were before. All we could do was hope and pray his death parts would go back to whatever hell they came from, never to return. Our prayers were in vain. The band spent the following year playing shows across southern Ontario and Quebec. Our reputation for being a wildly energetic live band superseded us. One night, after performing a sold-out show at Cherry Cola's Rock and Roller Cabaret Lounge in Toronto, we were approached by a man wearing a sharp suit. He said he was forming a record label and was looking for a hot young rock band to help go all the way. We were intrigued. Limos and Learjets loomed large in our slightly stoned minds. This was our big break. This was the big time. Nothing could stop us now, or so we thought. There we were, towering high above Toronto, in a massive skyscraper, about to sign our very first record contract. 
our dreams of stardom about to come true. Only one thing could ruin this moment, a clunker's classic, and he was due. Many months had passed since his last one, which was unceremoniously released in the confines of the band band coming home from a gig in Ottawa, but I'll save that malodorous story for another day. The man in the suit was eager to sign us. He had detailed a plan for success, which he plotted out over the course of the meeting. Blaze, who was a good drummer and natural-born rock star, was sitting tall and prime. The smile on his face was well-earned. Nevertheless, I didn't trust the look on Clunker's face. He was squirming in his seat, sweating more than usual, not saying much. His eyes were crippled with fear. All the alarms in my head went off at once. This could only mean one thing. I shot him a look that said, Don't you dare. Then I watched in horror as Clunker angled his buttocks just so and released his poisonous gas upon us. His face told me what I already knew. Uh-oh. It was a fart that could end a marriage. Clunker's classic was heading straight for our newly acquired manager, who seemed genuinely alarmed by the severity of it, and started asking Clunker questions about his personal hygiene. Things turned ugly. Within minutes, our manager was choking and thrashing around in his leather chair, succumbing to the toxicity of Clunker's rancorous rectum. He clutched his chest and made a funny face. Then he went still. His eyes bulged from their socket while his tongue lay long like a discorded banana peel. Blaze was quick to call for help, but it was no use. Our manager was dead, and so were our dreams of becoming rock stars. The band broke up soon thereafter, a rotten ending to an otherwise good run. That was fifteen years ago. We never caught wind as to what caused Clunker's death farts, but he's done his very best at keeping them downwind. Last month, we were asked to reunite for a one-off tribute show to honor our number one fan who passed away recently due to cancer. We happily agreed. We've gotten a bit fatter and have less hair on our heads, but other than that, we're still the same three dumbasses. Today is show day. I was worried sick. I didn't want anything to ruin this picturesque event. And let's face it, there's only one thing that can spoil this event. A clunker's classic. The opening band delivered an exceptional set, leaving the fist-pumping crowd wanting more. Bomb Threat was about to hit the stage. As per tradition, the band shared a group hug. Blaze was in the zone. No worries there. The clunk, on the other hand, was looking rough. And that's putting it mildly. This can't be good. Unlike me, the clunk doesn't get nervous before a show. It's something else. Oh dear God, not tonight. Please, no. I tried to remain calm. I'm telling myself I was just having pre-show jitters, but I knew better. For the first time in 15 years, Bomb Threat returned to the stage. The audience was adoring. Blaze led the way, twirling his drumsticks, surging with adrenaline. Clunker, on the other hand, was acting sketchy, even for him. He waddled like a penguin towards his fender bass. His hands were trembling. He wiped a sweaty palm through his thinning hair. He gave me a weary thumbs up. I watched in horror as his shoulders slumped and his body retracted as he reached for his instrument. I braced myself for the worst. The worst is what I got. Clunker turned to me and with a fox-like grin and hapless eyes, he uttered the words that I feared the most. Uh-oh.
Hey there, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this story. Uh, I have to say, this was probably one of the hardest stories that I have recorded. I had to read it so many times that I became desensitized to the comedy. I thought it was a wonderfully written story. It was funny as hell. Yeah, I, I know. Potty humor is funny. Some of you may think so. Some of you may have your own little story. But thank you for watching this. Uh, and Marcus Starr, the author, thank you so much for writing this. Uh, I truly enjoyed it. And folks, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon. And thank you so much for listening to this. I do appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful night.